Well, hey guys, it's Darwin, and today I want to do something that I haven't done for a really long time here on the channel, hence the old spot, hence the old setup, and that is a review, a shoe review, specifically the Ultra Olympus 4 versus the Ultra Temp 3 versus the Ultra Lone Peak 5. What's the difference in these shoes? What are each of them really good at? And what shoe is my new go-to? All right, so obviously it has been quite some time since I've done one of these typical sit down outside and review a single piece of gear videos. And if you've listened to my podcast or watched some of my videos from the past four months, you'll know that basically I got burnt out on doing the exact same type of gear review video that I've done a million times for six years. I needed to spice things up. I needed to change things creatively for myself and have fun doing something new. So why the return to form now? Well, I have a really big through hike coming up next month that I haven't released yet. So stay tuned for that because I'm sure I'll drop a video on the channel about what I'm actually doing. But let's say on this hike, I'm using a lot of new types of gear that I haven't used before and a bigger variety of new types of equipment. So lately I've been testing and trying out and prepping a lot of new things. So I figured why not start making these types of videos again in lead up to this hike. Now going forward, I won't be sitting outside. I just kind of did this because I thought it was funny. It's way easier for me to shoot inside of the studio, especially because the light has already changed on me about five times at this point. Uh, about four people have walked by because there's a trail right there and it's kind of starting to get windy. So before we get into these shoes and talk about each one of them and what I like, let's uh, take it back to the studio. All right, that's better. So if you've been following my channel for like the last five years, I like most through hikers am a big fan of ultra shoes. I think my first pair of ultras were back in 2017. I tried the Lone Peak 2.5 and I got addicted. I really got into the three for years, which I still hold is probably the best shoe they've ever made. I started using the 3.5s on the PCT in 2018 and those shoes didn't really work out for me in the long run. They were just a little bit too narrow. I had problems with the heel. So I got rid of those. I went on to the Ultra Olympus. Then I used those for a year. And then I went on to the Ultra Temp. So needless to say, I am a bit of an Ultra fanboy. And mainly because of the really wide toe box. I have some super wide feet. So having more room in the shoe, especially when I'm out hiking and putting in all those miles, your feet start to kind of expand and swell. I have room in the shoe to fill out. In 2019, I ended up finding my favorite shoe, which was the Temp 1.5. So I bought up a bunch of them, they discontinued it, and I recently killed my last pair. So lately I have been searching for a new go-to shoe, my new favorite perfect shoe that's gonna work for me on all of the hikes that I have coming up and especially the big one that I'm gonna be starting next month. So. Without further ado, let's dive into these three shoes that I've been kind of testing and putting miles on and trying to figure out which one of them is gonna work for me the best in the long run. All right, so first up is the Ultra Olympus 4. Now this is gonna be the max cushion shoe that Ultra has in their lineup. It has a 33 millimeter stack height. It is still a zero drop shoe, even though it honestly doesn't really look like it, right? So 33 millimeters of cushion. It has a full mesh upper with that patented super wide toe box and a what Ultra calls their mega grip sole that does have Vibram rubber on it. Now out of all of these shoes and I think maybe all of Ultra shoes that they make, the Olympus tends to at least for right now be the only shoe that has Vibram rubber. In the Olympus 4, I wear a men's size 12 and a pair of the size 12 without insoles because I usually use a pair of custom insoles, weighs in at one pound, 7.8 ounces, and this is definitely the most expensive shoe in their lineup, coming in at $170. All right, so next up is the Temp 3. I was pretty excited about this shoe when it came out, but uh, well, I'll go over why I'm not so excited about it here in a little bit. 
All right, so the specs on this bad boy are the Temp 3 sits right in the middle of the road as far as cushion goes. It has a 29 millimeter stack height, and again, just like all of their shoes, it is a zero drop. It has a Quantic midsole, which I think is just a fancy branding tactic. I don't really know what Quantic means, but regardless, it has a Quantic midsole. And the outsole is what Ultra is calling the inner flex outsole, which it does not have a rock plate, I believe. So that allows the shoe to be a lot flexier. Just like the Olympus, it has a full mesh upper. I really actually think that out of all of these shoes, this has the widest toe box. In the Temp 3, I wear a men's size 13, and in the 1.5s, I wore a 12 and a half. I ordered these in a 12 and a half, and they were way too tight around the laces on top of my foot, so I sent those back and went with the 13. And for a pair of men's size 13, again, without the insole, these come in at one pound, 5.4 ounces, and they retail for $140. All right, on to the last shoe that I've been testing and one that actually has pleasantly surprised me. The first time that I've used this shoe since 2018, the Ultra Lone Peak 5. The Lone Peak 5 has the least amount of cushion in it with a 25 millimeter stack height and again, a zero drop. The midsole is made of an Ego or Ego uh, EVA foam. I think, again, that's just a branding thing. I don't really know what that means. This shoe does have a rock plate in it, and the outsole is made of their Max Track rubber with the Trail Claw lugs that Ultra has been putting on their shoes for years. Unlike the Olympus and the Temp, this actually has a different type of upper and it almost seems like ripstop nylon. So it's not so mesh as more of it is a ripstop, um, which I'm actually excited about because I think that that's gonna hold up longer and not get as many holes in it like sometimes the mesh does when you're on the trail. I surprisingly am in a size 12, which I was super happy about because the last time I tried this shoe, I was in a 12 and a half pushing a 13 and for a men's size 12 for the pair without the insoles these come in at one pound 5.7 ounces and out of the three these are the cheapest at 130 dollars all right so out of all three of these shoes let's talk about what i think each one of these shoes is really good for first off let's start with the olympus I went to the Olympus in 2018 whenever I got to Washington on the PCT because my knees were a little wore out from putting, you know, 2,000 miles on them and I wanted a little more cushion. So I think that the Olympus is a really good shoe if you're needing more cush on the trail. These were also really good when I was on the Arizona Trail in 2019 because you are hiking on a lot of really hard packed soil and sand and dirt. So having that extra cushion for the impact is perfect. As far as the temp goes, honestly, without getting into the negatives of it, I think this might be one of Ultra's best shoes. As far as its weight, as far as fit, as far as cushion. It's why I liked the Temp 1.5s for so many years because it was such a comfortable shoe. It had a ton of room in the toe box. It had a ton of cushion in the back. And for the most part, those shoes lasted quite some time. And then we have the Lone Peak. This shoe has become a staple for through hikers over the last, what, five years you'll see most through hikers wearing this shoe. And I think for a lot of reasons, there's a lot of outfitters that carry these. They are the cheapest. And when you're a through hiker, you go through a lot of different shoes. When you're on the trail, you're just destroying them. And it's just overall, I don't know. It's kind of the, the do it all shoe. All right, so let's talk about the negatives of these shoes. Number one, I wanna start off with the new temp. I was really excited to get this shoe. Like, I was really excited to get this shoe, especially because the 1.5 worked so well for me. I went and tried a pair of these on in the store. 
They fixed the width thing again. They weren't tight around my toes. But I have only put about 40 miles on these and they have already started to just get destroyed. Um, it's kind of a delaminating issue. I don't know if you can see that, but they just kind of start coming apart. And overall, the shoe starts losing its structure. So right now I have a piece of cardboard in there, but as you can see, because it doesn't have a rock plate, because it does have a lot of mesh, and because they just didn't get this stuff glued right, this shoe doesn't really have any structure to it. It is a very comfortable shoe. It has a ton of cushion. It has uh, a great fit to it, but overall, I'm just worried that I'm only gonna be able to get like 150 miles on these before they're just blown out and done. I really, really wanted to love this shoe and I've been pushing it and I've been trying to see if I can deal with it. And at the end of the day, I would not choose this shoe if I was doing a through hike and depending on a shoe to last a good four or 500 miles. So that is my big beef with the Temp. Three. So next up, the Olympus 4. Again, I think this is an awesome shoe. It's super comfortable because it has that extra cushion. It has a nice, wide, comfortable toe box. It has that Vibram outsole, so you know it's gonna last a long time. And with previous versions of this shoe, I've put a ton of miles on them before they break down. So they're very well built, but they are a bit clunky. If I'm on a trail that has a lot of rocks and roots and it's easy to kind of catch your feet on things, this shoe is a bit of a clunker. I tend to hit it on everything, especially that nice big fat sole. It tends to grab rocks. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it, it's a little clunky. Super comfortable and I think that if you're hiking a trail that is a ton of desert, these nice long stretches of hard packed desert, I think this shoe would be perfect. But if you're doing something like say the AT where you're constantly having to navigate around roots and slick rocks and stuff, I have a little bit of a problem on the trail with this shoe. And then last but not least is the new Lone Peak 5. I have been very pleasantly surprised with this shoe. Again, after the 3.5 and that shoe given me so many problems out on the PCT, I kind of swore off the Lone Peak. I swore that I wouldn't go back to it because I just didn't think that, you know, I thought that they got away from the shoe. They started turning it into something it wasn't. The toe box got really narrow. They started putting too much crap on it as far as like rubber and plastic to reinforce it. And it just become heavy and narrow and not my style. And this shoe has surprised me. I've now put uh, probably about 60 miles on this pair, and they've been great. They're still holding up well, they haven't fallen apart, like the Temp 3. They're not clunky on the trail, they have a nice amount of cushion, they have that rock plate, great grip. And really my only beef with the shoe is I wish it had a little more cushion, especially back here in the heel. I just feel like it's missing some cush back here in the heel. Now, I am known for being a heel striker. It's something that I've really tried to correct over the years, and especially lately after getting an injury on the Benton Mackay Trail. I've tried to think about how I'm placing my feet whenever I strike the ground, but sometimes I wish there was just a little more cushion. Now, obviously time's gonna tell in how these shoes hold up, but I think with that, uh, that ripstop upper, these are gonna last a lot longer on the trail. All right, so out of all three of those shoes, either the Olympus 4, the Temp 3, or the Lone Peak 5, what is my new go-to shoe? The shoe that I'm gonna rock for the next handful of months this summer on all of these trail miles? The Lone Peak 5. Again, this shoe has surprised the crap out of me. It's super comfortable. It seems crazy durable because of that new upper. It has great grip. And, you know, honestly, it not having as much cushion back here in the heel is kind of forcing me not to heel strike. So maybe in the long run, uh, that, that less cushion is going to help me out. The other nice thing is because I am a through hiker and because I have to go through a lot of shoes, these are cheaper than those other two. So it's a little easier on the wallet. So. The Lone Peak 5, to me, is back. The king has returned. <laughs> Maybe not the king, because I think that Ultra actually has a shoe called the king, but regardless, 
the Lone Peak is my new go-to shoe. All right, so hopefully this video gave you a little bit of an insight on some of the key differences between those three popular hiking shoes. For me, again, it comes down to the fit, it comes down to the money because I'm using so many shoes, and it comes down to the durability. When I'm doing something like a through hike and I'm hiking for thousands of miles, I want something that's gonna last a long time and just overall be comfortable, especially having a nice wide toe box with a lot of room in that upper so as my feet expand, it will fill out. So that is why the, uh, the Lone Peak is definitely my new favorite. So Ultra did not pay me to make this video. I'm not sponsored by anybody and nobody gave me any of these shoes. I bought them all at full price from local outfitters and I actually just got done buying about five pairs of these to get ready for my summer hikes. So what is your current favorite shoe? Is it one of the ones that I talked about today? Is it something completely different by a completely different brand? Leave us something down below and let us know your thoughts. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always guys, thanks for watching.